People always think that mathematics is pure science, but that is not the case at all. Mathematics is culturally conditioned, historically conditioned. I am Andrea Brea, a mathematician and sinologist working on the history of mathematics from ancient to modern times in China. We are surrounded by numbers. They determine our everyday lives and seem to be autonomous and universal. But are number systems the same all over the world? And what does mathematics say about the culture, development and progress of a country? If you study the history of mathematics or numbers in China, you are definitely studying the cultural history and intellectual history of China as well. Because mathematics does not develop independently of the external world, it always exists in the context of everyday life, the political and the social context. Paris. Here, Andrea Briard has been able to deepen the ties between her research as a mathematician and a sinologist. A special field, because it requires both a profound mathematical understanding and thorough knowledge of the Chinese language. The research takes her back to the second millennium BC, and mathematics functions as a key to explore an ancient Chinese tradition, oracle bones that were used for divination. Using statistical methods, Andrea Briar has identified stable patterns for the enigmatic combination of numerals used within religious practices. It is quite remarkable to hold such a bone in your hand, considering that it is the oldest document of Chinese writing. The great challenge is that up until the 19th century, Chinese mathematics was characterized by natural language. Neither numerals commonly used in the West nor formulas could be found here. From a purely visual standpoint, a mathematical text could not be distinguished from a literary one. I am especially excited about exploring how mathematical laws were expressed through language here, in a completely different way than we are used to in the West. Without having an explicit logic or an explicit theory, you have to read between the lines and find out how it came about that a mathematician in Chinese antiquity or in the Middle Ages was able to actually find such complex algorithms. But how did mathematical practice evolve in China? What historical events led to a change in its form of representation? Here at the Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen, Andrea Briar will devote herself to the transformation of Chinese mathematics, among other things. With this, she will make a significant contribution to the global history of science. The nice thing about this new Humboldt professorship in Erlangen for me is that I have found my place here. And research always needs the right place. I can carry out projects here that are both very mathematical and very sinological. I have a wonderful interface here where these two meet and where I can work. This is something I've never found before. The goal is to make historical questions tangible through mathematics and show a different path of discovery. Because before mathematics in China was completely replaced by Western mathematics in 1930, a kind of mixed method of representation had emerged. Inspired by formulas on the one hand and traditional Chinese mathematics on the other. For example, the formula for the circumference of an ellipse changed within a century from the traditional form to a mixed form to symbolic algebra as we know it today. To address the changing discourse in mathematics in China, Andrea Briar will work with computational linguistics to create a multilingual database, both to provide access to a wide audience and to make linguistic changes in mathematics measurable. One of the goals of my work is to also decentralize the history of science, to turn away somewhat from this Eurocentric image of science to see that there was also science elsewhere that was highly developed, that developed differently in its cultural context, but that certainly deserves recognition.